we can go whenever. So you said you're good at cold reading? Yeah. Well, you're great at improv, so that makes sense why you're good at cold reading. Yeah, well, actually, when I was a kid, also, I would, um, in class, they would always have me read the chapters out loud. Really? I had certain teachers that, like, had me as their, like, their pick to read Hell out yeah. Loud. Yeah. I love that. What is your favorite thing about improv? My favorite thing about improv is that I get to jump in and out of a lot of different characters. I love that. I love that. Today's guest, we have Mr. Bill Cott, Mr. Larry Tate himself. How are you today? I'm doing good. Yeah? Yeah. Long drive here? Uh, yeah, I drove all the way from the valley, so. Oh, the valley's even further. Yeah, but I get in my, uh, I'm listening to a lot of podcasts, so I got in. What is yeah. some of the, fav like, your favorites right now? I'm binging Fly on the Wall right now with Dana Carvey and David Spade. You wrote for the David, Dana Carvey show. I wrote show. and performed on the Dana Carvey show many, many years ago. He does great impressions. Love David Spade. Oh, they're, that that's, okay, I've seen that podcast before. I've seen yeah. clips from it, and they're, the two of them together are a diabolical comedy duo. They are. They're they got a great. Lot of, of running gags that if you listen to it a lot, you're like, ah, oh. every time they mention Al Franken, they're both going to go, eh. And I imagine, because I think all the clips that I've seen, they're all video clips. But I imagine yeah. that listening to it is just as good with the two of them. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love it. This is, will probably be the most all over the place episode that I will have from this podcast because we both have ADHD. So I'm sure at any point we are both going to forget the tangents that we went on. But we're going to ride the wave. I didn't. Normally, I have a prepared set of questions, but I know this one's going to go all <laughs> over the place. So we're just going to ride it today Let's if you're it. OK with that. Absolutely. Which you, I think, disclosed on a previous podcast that you recently discovered yeah. your ADHD diagnosis. Yeah, just two years ago. And was it a self-diagnosis? Um, no, it was not a self-diagnosis. It was a TikTok diagnosis. <laughs> Great. I, I like what it. happened was I, I, you know, TikTok kind of like shows you who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's, it's amazing when I watch other people's for you I'm like, oh, I don't see. You're the only person dancing that ever shows up in my feed. And that's because we're friends, you know? Yeah. But the algorithm doesn't necessarily show dance videos as much as they did in like 2020. Yeah. They don't. They're okay. not as prominent anymore. Well, I, but I, I assume that there are anymore. some people who like that's their thing and they want to see a bunch. So they probably see a lot more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden I noticed that that all these videos that I've been liking and been like, oh, that's so true for me. Had the hashtag, hashtag ADHD, and I was like, does that mean I'm ADHD? And, um, and I was in uh, marriage counseling at the time, and I brought it up with the therapist, and he said, yeah, you know, you really should talk to a psychiatrist, because some of that stuff sounds like you might be. And so I um, met with a psychiatrist, and I've, I've tried several different medications out, and it wasn't until I learned to start building a scaffolding that the medications began to be of any use to me. Because all they did was give me, they gave me a lot more energy, but then all of a sudden I'm still ADHD and I'm trying to do this task and that task. And I get You're hyper-focused on, on whatever's a giving thousand me dopamine different things that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, okay, this is giving me some dopamine, so now let me funnel it into what needs to be done at this hour of the day, that hour of the day. I've seen a lot of talk as it relates to ADHD on creating dopamine reward based incentives mm -hmm. to get what you want done so for example if if i ha if i know i know i have to call i somebody hit my car on the 110 the other day like oh no like two months ago their insurance still is yet to call me and i know i need to make the call just mm -hmm. to be like hey what's going on i just I can't, whatever, I just can't get around to it. Mm -hmm. And I know it, it's in the back of my head, but I just know it's going to be a headache. I know the call is going to be a headache. I know they're going to give me a bunch of BS, so I just haven't done it. Mm -hmm. But I tell myself, if I make this call today, then I can go do something that I know is going to give me that dopamine boost. Yeah. And I just go straight to the dopamine boost. Yeah. But I'm trying. I'm trying. Have Seven you... times out of ten, it's not the headache you thought it was going to be. No. You're it'll... like, oh, it was just the ADHD <laughs> telling me it was going to be that. You'll get it done in like two minutes. I've done months, what I thought was going to take me months worth of work mm -hmm. in 30 minutes. And yeah. been like, wow, I stressed over all of that for months. And it could have just taken me half an hour to get this done. Yeah. And it didn't. 
Have you found any useful tips or trip tips or tricks to coping with your ADHD or to helping you kind of Yeah, here's some of the things that are like just outside the game. I try to take a cold shower first thing in the morning. I try to get out and get some exercise. Mm -hmm. I walk at my local park. I just take, you know, about six laps. So I get about two and a half miles of walking done every day, which I suppose is good. It's I, I used to get in four four miles every day. Wow. When I lived in Pasadena. Um, but uh, so I try to get a try to get a workout in. Try to eat healthy. Try to remember to take my meds. What's the other thing that people are always like? Oh, it's gonna you're gonna get addicted to these meds. And I'm like, yeah. How how come then? Like you know. <laughs> Two to three times a week, I actually forget. I'm like halfway through the day. I'm like, it's too late to take it now. Have I'll be you up ever? All night. Have you ever taken and forgot you've taken it and then taken double? Because I've done that. Oh, I don't think I've and done. And then I'll immediately take it and be like, oh my god, I already took it. Oh my god, I already took it. Oh. And I, I'm not one to purge anything up. And I'm like, we're just we're. And I hate that wave. I hate if I take too much ADHD medication because it, it, it gives why, me a headache. That's why it helps to use one of those things that old people use for their medication. <laughs> With the little days and on I, them. I take enough meds at this point now anyway that I, I need to take this and that for I high need blood to pressure do that. or whatever. I take a lot of natural supplements yeah. as I'm trying to wean off my ADHD medication. Mm -hmm. And that would help. Have you ever tried Brillia? What is that? It's, a, it's an all-natural ADHD med. Is it okay? I'm gonna have to look it up. And if you go to the link in my bio, no, just kidding. This I've, is this is your camera, by the way. I should have go, said that at the beginning. That's all right. I'm yeah. not really pitching anything. Pitch it. Uh, a friend recommended it to me, and I I tried it, and um, I, it almost got me too hyped up because I thought natural would be like a little bit more, but um, at least at the time, uh, it wasn't as helpful as I had hoped it would be. Do you get a lot of anxiety? I do. Yeah. Have you ever tried L-theanine? I haven't. Give me a second. So these are L-theanine gummies. Mm -hmm. They are an amino acid, but they help with calmness. Would you like one? If uh, you don't want one, if, it's fine. If they they're help not, with calmness, I'll try they, it's it. It's all natural. It's just... Um, just one, right? Yeah. they're it's not, not not Halloween. Oh, hold not, on a second. I actually took two. I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to become too calm. You won't, but you, me, it won't. Drugs, you live won't the be. Air. I so the first time I the first time I took it, my therapist recommended this to me. Mm -hmm. And the first time I choose, like you're gonna feel it probably immediately, like within the first 10, 20 minutes. Wow. And I didn't believe her because I feel like I don't feel anything <laughs> anymore, just in terms of natural supplements. When you've done pharmaceutically made mm -hmm. ADHD medication, I just feel like it it sh takes a shot to your nervous system. So I feel like I don't feel anything anymore, but those ones, I felt happy. Like it just made me, it took the edge off. Whatever angst was happening up in my brain, it just took a nice, and I felt motivated to get, it's crazy. I was like just off that little gummy, huh? So let me know what you'll feel cool. by the end of a, by the end of this episode. Yeah, let me know if you're feeling anybody, the, you're gonna be like episode, sleeping. Be like, yeah, man. Good night. And, uh, um, that's when I graduated. <laughs> Did you struggle growing up? Not because your ADHD. Did you experience any difficulties in school because of it? I was always the new kid. So I struggled making friends. And I thought it was just because I was the new kid. But I think part of it was because I wasn't fitting in. Maybe I was coming in too high energy. Um, I never fit in with any group. But... I was accepted by all the different groups. I was accepted by the, you know, by the popular kids, partially because I was in choir and in the plays mm -hmm, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I was um, accepted by the the rebels and the burnouts. Uh, they were kind of like my real gang, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that I was I was in um, I, I I was not never like in a clique, but I was accepted by a lot of the different cliques. What about academically? Academic I did very well. Yeah. I was like, I think I graduated with a 4.0 or maybe a 3.8. Uh, I was in the National Honor Society. But I always felt like I was behind the curve. I always, I was always, I would always like have like, you know, terror sweats at like 9 p.m. on Sunday evening about something that I thought I had forgotten 
or felt I had forgotten or I maybe had literally forgotten. <laughs> Sometimes I hadn't forgotten anything, but I was like, what did I forget? Oh my God. Or I would freak out and there would be something that mm -hmm. I forgot and my mom would have to calm me down and, you know. Because you probably have forgotten in the past and oh, yeah. that terror comes back. Yeah. I still have nightmares that I, I'm late or I have forgotten a test or that mm -hmm. I failed a test because I didn't show up. Yeah. I still get those dreams all the time, which is crazy. I think what brought it on for me in college was or what, what it was exacerbated the most by. Well, first of all, once you have to do papers all the time, you know, it's kind of on your own. How early are you going to start? How late are you going to wait? I would always wait until the last minute last and cram. Last possible second. And I would do great work. However, you know, this is realize I went, I went to college in the um, late 80s, early 90s. And so they were just starting to come out with a commu computer lab. Oh. And I was intimidated by a computer lab that was a whole new set of skills. Mm -hmm. So I was typing on a manual typewriter. So I would have to retype after we got the, the notes. I would have to retype it manually again. And so sometimes those would be late because I couldn't just go in there and like make five or six changes and hit print. Oh, man. What a blessing computers have been, especially yeah. to ADHD kids, you know? But what really got me was I was taking... Um, I think it was modern British literature, which I thought, oh, great. It's going to be like stuff that was written in the last 15, 20 years. No, that was like, it was still stuff that I would have to do like research on what these phrases meant in Latin and what was going on historically at the time to understand the text. And like I had aced mo most of my classes, my first three years in college, by just paying attention in yeah. class discussions. Yeah. Not reading mass amounts of lar like text. Yeah. That make no sense. By the way, I think that that um, that gummy you just gave me for the <laughs> calmness just calmed me down. Seriously? Yeah. Not that I was feeling anxiety here today. Right. But I feel like a little more like you know when uh -huh. when, when you it's... met me here that I was like a little bit out of it, and I do feel a lot more calm. Wow. Wow. Who expected that? I didn't. From I didn't. When my therapist gummy. told me, I was like, yeah, 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 and then I took it. And I got a whole bunch of stuff done in like an hour and I just felt good. Like there was no, yeah. the, the voices stopped. It's not, you know, they just, all the chatter in the top of my head just for a second was right. like, everything's cool. Yeah. Just get your stuff done. Got, I was like, is this interview. is what, <laughs> yeah. Whew. Is Boy, this what normal keep those people on hand feel? For everybody that you, that's why you have it here. Well, I feel like, oh, I, I feel sure a little bit shady because I, I don't want anybody to think I'm like handing out drugs, but like this is just it's all it's, natural. It's not a drug, you know? it's all natural. And yeah, definitely put it in a link somewhere. Yeah, for sure. The L theanine, I take uh I take a lot of different supplements, yeah. but yeah, they definitely help just take the edge off. Yeah. But I'm sure ADHD has helped you with your improv. Definitely. Definitely. Keeps you on your when toes. I hyper focus when I need to like be in the moment. Or when I need to be hyper observant. The one thing I've always loved about improv and what I see in comics and stand-up comedy all the time is that, I mean, it's such a standard rule, but no is not an option, right? Like any sort of premise. And I don't know if this is across the board, but as basic foundation of improv is no, don't discount the premise or scenario as in not being in reality. You have to just go with it. Which yeah. then creates and people do that a lot because they think it'll be funny to deny the reality and it will it will get a very brief laugh from mm -hmm. the audience they'll be like, ah, they thought they were in a bank and they're not yeah but then the rest of the scene crumbles and you have to start from square one again then what is the scene about mm -hmm. so it's better to just accept what's there just like everything in life accept what's there because you're not going to be able to change it mm -hmm. and move forward with that i love that so I know there's a lot of people, child actors specifically, who are coming up right now and talking about their time on Nickelodeon or Disney. As an adult who's been on Disney Channel, were you ever subject to any sort of rules or guidelines being on the Disney Channel or were any sort of things kind of... Well, there, you know, there's a contract that you sign. It's like a morals clause. It says, you know, I'm uh -huh. not going to do this or that. Uh -huh. We know. can fire you for any reason if we deem what you and do. I never, you know, that's never been an issue for me. I yeah. was, we were talking earlier. I, uh, I, I've, I've done in the past comedy sports, and I still do it from time to time today, which is a, a family-friendly, uh, competitive improvisation. Jason Sudeikis used to do it. He's oh, yeah. on a bunch of different podcasts. Um, 
And you'll find that people who come up through comedy sports are very, very familiar with staying family friendly and keeping a family friendly. So I, so I never worried about what I was gonna say on set. I knew my lifestyle. It's a pretty unhip lifestyle. I don't, I don't hit clubs. I, I, I was never gonna do anything that would embarrass myself. But uh, one time at a table read, I brought in, um, I had like my script and then like a stack of magazines or something like that because I was gonna take these magazines into my trailer later on. And one of them was Esquire, which isn't a dirty magazine. No. I, I don't. I don't get into porn. I don't. I don't read Playboy. I did when I was a, like a thirteen-year-old boy, and I was who didn't see Playboy at like. one point or another. Right. Somebody's dad always had them, or you had them out in the woods. Or somebody <laughs> Everybody would always have them out somewhere out in the woods. We had them, and my brother went and like snitched on everybody, including himself, that they were hidden out there. And I think my mom made them, and like of Rude. course everybody was pissed off at us. Oh, but, no fair. Like, so in my adult life, I don't, I don't need those yeah. sorts of magazines around. No. And I, uh, the, the director that week, uh, Victor Gonzalez, was like, oh, he gave me this look like, you know, don't, you shouldn't have that How dare the Esquire? Like, How dare you have it's the Esquire? Esquire? It's like, it's mostly so I know what cologne to wear. Or, or like, you know, it's like which Burberry scarf looks good with my, my tweed jacket. That's funny. That's funny that they thought Esquire would have been somebody thought. But I think there was like some some model in a um, uh, swimsuit or something like that. That it, so it looked like it was that kind of a magazine. How dare you? Right. How dare you? That was the only time ever. I think I had the cleanest mouth, even above the kids on oh, the set of Wizards. I have no doubt that you had the a way cleaner mouth than the kids. Why is that? Do you think? Like from I think your experience, they're experimenting with their adult life. Yeah. They're, you know, they're testing all the boundaries. And, well, the, the great thing about Wizards was all the kids were really sweet. They weren't bratty. They didn't have an ego. And the one who had the right to have the biggest ego, Selena, was probably the most generous and probably mm -hmm. the most calm. Wow. Not not to say that, that any of them were any we're less not. calm yeah. than that. But, yeah. That's awesome. I think that, that show lucked out. And, you know, everybody has their own problems and, you know, Things after the fact. Did you did you ever know? Dan Benson is doing like OnlyFans. No way. Yes. Oh, you know what? I think I saw a clip about that. I've even duetted some of his uh, like his OnlyFans content. Traps. Yeah, there's there's, <laughs> there's one where he like rips his shirt off, one. and I duetted that, and both ripped oh their shirt off. Oh my god! Like, I wonder if he's making a killing. Um, I think he is. I think he Would is. Would you ever join OnlyFans? I, I've never, I, I all I know is that it's like, is it Would all porn related or some of it's just No, like, I think some people do, I think a lot of people do like nude or half nude, but I think a lot, the original intent behind OnlyFans was supposed to be made for like musicians. Right, to like give a Patreon access, sort of Yeah, thing, a Patreon right? so that certain, if you subscribed, you know, your diehards got access to, to content they'd never seen before. And yeah, the adult industry took advantage of it, and it man went so, on. So I probably thing. wouldn't just for that purpose. Just, I know, just in case I was ever on something that had a morals clause, and that they thought Esquire they is the same only thing only as fans. OnlyFans, and they're like, oh, you can't do that. It's yeah, but luckily there are things like Patreon where which the, I don't the understand name. how it works, but I would love to. I there's a woman that I follow on TikTok. Her name is Molly McPherson. She okay. is a PR crisis manager. So when any, anytime something happens with celebrities, she talks about her four point framework that she has for essentially saving themselves and their reputations. Like mm -hmm. if they want to redeem themselves, like they have to apologize, they have to take accountability, right? She, I love her because she's dead on every time. Like anytime she talks about somebody and she knows a lot about the business, she mm -hmm. knows a lot about journalism. She made a Patreon for the first time a couple weeks ago and it has like, She's just getting it up and started. I didn't have a Patreon until she said, and I was like following, but it is harder to, it's not so user friendly. Mm -hmm. Like the app isn't as like TikTok's super easy to yeah. just get on and start using. When yeah. did you get on TikTok? I got on TikTok. I have been doing this thing on Facebook called the Live Jive. What is, oh. Which, actually, here's, here's how it started. Live Jive started with, it was just, um, the same week that I found out that my father died, I was diagnosed with type two diabetes. 
And so uh, I was very worried. I weighed a lot more than I do now. Uh, I'm technically no longer diabetic, but I'm still taking some medications for it. But anyway, so the first thing I remember was um, Wilford Brimley. Remember he'd be like, uh, oatmeal helps fight off diabetes. <laughs> so, so the first thing. That was such a great impression. Thank you. Oh. So I, uh, my daughter loves the, because yes. apparently there's a bunch of memes on YouTube about diabetes. <laughs> so every time I do that for her, she's six years old, she loves it. She thinks it's diabetes is funny. Uh, like diabetes and mesothelioma for this generation of kids, they're the most hilarious things in the world. Um, I did. The older the generation's regime. not laughing. No, not, not at all. laughing. <laughs> but, uh, so, so, so I started making oatmeal every morning, and it was kind of boring because you're bo you're waiting for water to boil. This is that old joke. Like, just boring, sitting here yep. for, I was like, what could make this more exciting? And that was just at the time when. An app called Periscope had come out. Ah, Periscope? I loved Periscope. So I would do it on Periscope, and I'd call it oat scopes. While you're waiting for the water to boil. Yeah. See, when they say like do anything, when mm -hmm. they're talking about you know doing lives or like it doesn't have to be anything monumental or like, yeah. you know it could be as simple as I'm waiting for my water to boil. Let's hang out and chat. I wish and I that's had what the. It became. That's what I'm gonna do now. I'm making yeah. my coffee. And if you go to Facebook and you go to uh, Live Jive Hive. Okay. Like you, you, you'll see the page Live Jive. And then you can see like years and years worth of stuff. I do the bonus Live Jives, which would be characters, mm -hmm. improvised songs and things like that. And then during the pandemic, all of a sudden that became my daily job. Because at first it was just like, while well, I did this thing. Then my daughter was born. And then my mornings were like, I'm going to try to look after her while I'm cooking. So it was tough to do yeah. that. Yeah. So it kind of dropped off a little bit. But pandemic came and, um, you know, everybody was at home and I had nothing else to do. And I was like, live jive. I'm doing live jive. I'm going to be the only original content out there. And so I started doing live jive every day and people started saying, you should do, uh, you, this would be great on, on TikTok. And I didn't know about the TikTok live. There's a lot of people who, who, who get introduced to TikTok and they don't understand the concept of live streaming. Yeah. They just know the, the short videos. Yeah. Which, by the way, once you watch one long video on TikTok now, they start feeding you lots of long videos, and you're like, how did I fall into this wormhole? Yeah. You but, ever, you, you, go ahead. Um, so I started doing live jive every day at 4 p.m. on TikTok, and that's how I grew my following. Actually, here's how I really grew my wow. following. I, I, I made a series of TikToks that were Mr. Larry Tate related. Ha I, you'd I, have to. Yeah. You'd people, have to. People would start commenting, hey, I remember you. And then I went away for a camping weekend with some friends who were in the same like COVID bubble. And apparently stepping away from TikTok is what shot up. And then I was like, I was freaking out that I had 5,000 followers. Cause you know, back then that was a lot for for, for Twitter. You yeah. Know? So I didn't realize that people get, you know, you millions. You have so many more on TikTok, on TikTok now. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. I'm 135,000. That's awesome. Two million views, something like that. So. Yeah, see I took some time off, but I think I took too much time off and TikTok started to like suppress my content they're like you're not you can that always, serious you can always start again and then I'm you can started. repost the other have stuff have you thought about doing npc content you'd be great npc create do you know what i'm talking about uh oh non-player character the yeah. one where they get on the lives they I say like gang those. gang banana i did that and i had like 500 followers in a live and i was like i was doing it as a joke you know I, I i had a little white dot on the end of my nose and i didn't have now i would use my daughter's pandy ears that she used for <laughs> halloween from Gabby's. oh my goodness well, you ha absolutely have to i might i'll go in and give give you like one of the lines if you do that okay if you do that if if you say if you text me you say hey i'm here with pandy ears on i'll make sure i wait wait enough time okay enough people are in i'll i'll, I'll uh i'll start it off right that would be hilarious do you All think right. do people think you're being serious uh well yeah because i well I did it thinking, oh, this will be hilarious because I only knew that one or two people on TikTok were doing it at the time. And I thought it would be hilarious that this old guy that they know who played a principal on a Disney it's show like gang, is gang. there allowed, you know. <laughs> Ice cream. So good. Mm, yeah. Too spicy, but not sp not too spicy for a Texas chili. Oh, so Cowboy was, would be a great character. To oh, do. yeah. Everything. Everything was Cowboy related. Have you seen the hot dog guy? Have you seen the glizzy guy? I don't think so. He, he glizzies hot dogs. You've never seen him. 
I'm going to have to send him to you. Oh, okay. He must make a lot of money. I see him ev almost every morning. His lives come up on my page. All right. He'll either dress like a hot dog or he has like fake ones. And every time you gift him a hot dog, he just simulates. Yeah. And it's gotten okay. like completely out of control. And oh, I might have seen one from him. Yeah. He's just like. What does glizzy <sighs> mean again? Blow. Oh, okay. Hold on. I think, yeah. I, I definitely. Think I have. I, when you said glizzy, I was like, I don't know. And like he's... some of these terms I don't know. Yeah, but. your daughter's not at that age yet where she's starting to spit slang at you that you're yeah. not, you're not. Sometimes she does because she likes, she likes this game Slither. That it's like with snakes. Okay, you yeah. Know? And then she heard somebody in some TikTok video say Slither into your DMs. So she goes, Dad, I'm going to Slither into your DMs. And I'm like, you're what? Who said that? Something doesn't seem right about that. Oh my goodness. That doesn't seem right. Soldiers. He can't even take himself serious. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have seen that. I just didn't know what Glizzy was, and now I do. Now, unfortunately, now you do. Yep. There's also, uh, I, have you seen... I think when I hear Gliz, I think glitz and glamour. Yeah, I feel like and this there generation... there is something glamorous about getting one, but... Absolutely. Yeah. I feel or like... giving one, I'm sure. Uh, nothing glamorous about giving one, I don't think. Really? I now, here's, say. here's what I've heard. Maybe we're just getting too deep into this topic. <laughs> no, but please. There's, I... this, there's a sense of power behind it. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. So then I think glamour comes with that. With okay. The, with the okay. Beauty I was the, thinking hey, aesthetically, maybe not, not the ideal image of, of, you know. I think it's preferable. Put together. It's a little more, you I know. I think it's preferable all, barbaric, all I guess. along the way. Probably... I just watched a cat hair float by. I hope you're okay. You, I'll be I, okay. All of the guests that I've had so far have been allergic to cats, which is like <laughs> my worst freaking nightmare. So I'm like, and and like I'm noticing it on the mic, but I can't. I can deep clean this place to like the nth degree, mm -hmm. and I will still like somehow they just stray. It's just what I want to hear in the middle of a fellatio I'm, conversation <laughs> is about a hair. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> Let's, let's, let's get away from both Let's go back topics. to fellatio. Let's, let's go back no, to fellatio. I, I don't want to get caught on that topic for too long. <laughs> right. That's why I stayed away from it. I was like, I don't want to get Bill in trouble. All of a sudden, I don't want to get Bill clause. in trouble. It won't come back to haunt you. That's not a... Jennifer and David will never you have still get penny the checks? Wizards of Waverly Pod now. Um, do I get what? Did you have to sign that for the... For that no, not oh, for the Oh, yeah, I figured that. Those guys cuss like sailors. They do. They're oh, all yeah. like, we're getting it out of our system now. Yeah. I did uh I did the Ned's one. And, okay, uh, awesome. And I asked. I was like, "Can we cuss?" They're like, "Fuck yes." Bring them on. Bring it on. We're not contained to any rules at this point. Why would we, you know? Yeah. It's pretty cool to see the extent of the nostalgia of all of those shows coming back. Yeah. It's really awesome. And you, I'm sure as well, have been like, "Wow, this is I was overwhelmed by it." Yeah. Like I I knew that there were fans of it, and I knew there were fans of Selena and, you know, and and the whole cast, but I didn't think for the, the nerdy principal who was. Oh, no, you know, people that love you. Do I, I see? Was I go through your comment section sometimes, like on videos, and like people, it's like you know, yeah. you were you were their principal. Yeah, like they you were you were. However, like I don't think people always shared love for their principals back in school, did they? No, because. But that's why, because you, they were, didn't have a you were the time lovable and, one. And lick the top off a pudding container or whatever. I didn't see this one. Was that a thing? Oh, that was one. There was a there was an episode where um, Selena is kind of an outcast. Alex, her uh -huh. character, is an outcast. And uh, Larry Tate invites her into his office to have lunch. <laughs> and, and she teaches him how to text. She was like, Broom? she was, what's that? And I go, oh, it's my phone. Somebody keeps sending me messages. His name must be Tex. <laughs> uh, and then so she teaches him how to text. And then he's opening his his pudding package and he licks the, the foil that has like the pudding on the top of it. Oh, my God. His pudding cup. I and love it. And that's when it. she finds out that his name is Herschel. Oh. Herschel Larry Tate. Yeah. And people remember that. Once there's, you, you never think, you think of it as this one little detail that comes out. In a uh, in an episode, but now every time he's referred to, people refer to him as Herschel Larry Tate. And I'm like, I guess that's true. That's how you put canon together. Mm. And like little little bits and things that dribble out over yeah. time. Yeah, that's how you know they. I think at that 
impressionable age that people were watching it. You know, yeah. it's just something that embeds into your brain. You just don't forget it. Yeah. And that's just, it's just crazy. It's crazy to see. It's awesome to see. Um, and that's something about also about ADHD that you, you kind of like tend to forget portions of your life. Oh. I so although I knew I was Mr. Larry Tate, I, I don't think of myself as the guy who did Larry Tate, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I do a little bit more because I'm on TikTok and people call me that. And now that's that's in my memory more. But, you know, like I'll forget the movie that I, that I was in the movie The Ringer. But then sometimes there'll be older viewers on TikTok. Like if I'm live streaming later at night, some of the older people who are like parents or whatnot that like remember me from the movie The Ringer, they'll start commenting about that. And it'll, it'll piss off the kids that want to know about Wizards of Waverly Place, the people who are asking questions about The Ringer. And then I'll lose people on that live and I'll be like, well, it's just us now. <laughs> so, so let's talk about it. The movie The Ringer? Yeah. They would... Uh, People always say like, you know, hey, would they, would you, would you be able to re remake that movie? And I would know. I, th I think you could remake it if all the athletes in actually it were actually had. Special Olympians and actually had intellectual disability. But um, it would be insulting. Would I be in the movie? Yes, if I was a coach or something yeah. like that. Yeah, but a you... character, a supportive, a parent, you know, something like that. But uh, it, it would be insulting, I think. You know? yeah. And it was insulting when we made it, but I don't think anybody knew that. Right. But Hollywood wasn't trusting two different things. They weren't trusting that um, that you could keep it on time and on budget mm -hmm. with people with disabilities. And they proved Which them wrong. Which is so not true. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and secondly, that people would, would not want to come out and see a movie with characters also that were played true. by people with disabilities. And that's, that's why it has gained a cult following. Because, yeah, it, it wasn't going to be an instant hit because it's not as glamorous or as glizzy as one might think it is but it's also but that's a great acting challenge like it was you know having to portray somebody legitimately not in a way that's painting them as a joke just like right. authentic to, to, to be authentic to still find laughs in it but the laughs not be at the expense of the character for sure for sure it's a challenge yeah. It's yeah. and I'm sure you've, I'm sure there you've been on plenty of auditions where you've had to play something that you don't necessarily have a trait that the character has or, you know. Did you hear about the Snow White debacle? I heard something about it. What what is the problem? So now? they're postponing it. So they had a set release date. They made that whole hoopla. Everybody, you know, about not Hat Peter Dinklage came out about not wanting them to have actual dwarves or little people in mm -hmm. that show, um, in that movie. And so they said, we're not going to cast, right? We're not going to make- cast one gonna, person who well, was a little person, right? So they CGI'd dwarves. They just CGI'd dwarves in. Seven dwarves. <laughs> and they got backlash for it, so they had to push the movie back. And it was like, did you not get the memo? Did we not? Did we just, ah. Yeah. So you took seven roles away from from seven potential little people that would have loved to take you just CGI'd yeah. them and that wasn't that wasn't the point. Yeah. And I was oh like, my God. oh man, we missed the mark. Hilarious though to watch. They did. What a what a great opportunity for diversity <laughs> and just like That's one diversity ad that I have yet to see a lot of visibility performers out there. Yeah. Yeah. You said last year you went through a pretty hard time because you were going through a divorce. Yes. What came out of that learning lesson wise for you in terms of your mental health? In terms of my mental health, um, I think one thing that I learned was um, that I was very much a people pleaser, which also comes with ADHD. And so, um, you know, I think there were situations where I might have um, made my my ex um, uncomfortable because because I was not making myself comfortable, you know? Like she might have felt, oh, he's not being his authentic self. Why isn't he? And not knowing that that's why it was. Because I wasn't being honest, you know? Like I might have been uncomfortable with something but not spoken up about it and she's wondering what is that tension? And then me reacting to that tension. Yeah. So not that I'm taking all the blame, but some of these things I realize about myself, I'm like, um, 
Oh, wow. And so it, it was basically through going into therapy um, because I was, I was a wreck. Two years ago this time, I was a wreck. That was when we first started to discuss separating. Mm -hmm. And um, Was marriage counseling help, helpful for you? It or was. Or you both? It was. It was. And this, this is my second marriage. And I had been in marriage counseling in both marriages. Um, Same experiences? Totally different? I think very different. Yeah. Um, I think a lot, a lot of was different about my second marriage was that, you know, we have a daughter. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be, every, with everything that we say and do, we have to be mindful of how will this affect her. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a much more mindful process. And um, both of us trying to, in every way possible, maintain a friendship. Mm -hmm. Co-parent. Yeah. Would you ever let your daughter act? If she, she wanted, wanted to. to be? If she wanted to. It would be difficult for her to do that now because um, her mother works pretty long hours mm -hmm. and she's in an after school program and, you know, I'm a long distance away from them mm -hmm. um, by about an hour and a half some days, depending upon the traffic. Depends on which day. And so if she wanted to do that, I would have to, you know, drive all the way down, pick her up, take her in. Although there's a lot of things that are done remotely, but then that would be asking a lot of her mom to help her do a, you know, uh, a self tape. Is her mom, has, was her mom in the business at all? Her mom um, did improv and had an agent very briefly. You have a thing for the, the, the women in improv, don't you? I do. Yeah, all I right. Do. But actually, I was her improv teacher. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Larite getting his hands in the cookie jar. Because, that was, <laughs> just no, kidding. What, that was not, That'll that get was, cut. that is not how I That'll met her. No, 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 you, you know, you can leave that in there. The, um, uh, because that, that isn't what it was. It was, no, she, as a matter of fact, she, she specifically didn't take my class when we were, when we first started dating. And then afterwards she was like, this is something I would like to do. And then she went on to study uh, other places at, at IO and, you know, and with a lot of other great teachers around uh, Los Angeles. And um, frankly, she's really good at it. And it's it's something that I think helps her job too when she does presentations and um, just listening to clients. But um, part of me hopes she gets back into it and, and does it. She should. Keeps you quick on your feet. It means your child's gonna be a force to be reckoned with. She already is. Yeah. Is she just energy galore? She is energy galore. She also, like, her her use of vocabulary is amazing. The other day, she told her mom, like, I need to have a straw. This is a fiasco. <laughs> you know, a six-year-old. <laughs> where she picks up some of these terms. Does she uh, watch a lot of TV and movies? Um, she does not. She watches YouTubes. What kind? Unboxing videos or? Um, unboxing videos. She, Why are those she watches, so popular? I don't know. <laughs> blind bags. Um, and just stuff about memes. And she's, a, she's really... Big with uh, gaming. What kinds even, of games? games that she, even games she doesn't play, but she loves Among Us. Oh, yeah. That one's a big one. She loves um, Eevee. The Pokemon? It's a Pokemon game. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, Eevee has her own Pokemon game? Oh, yeah. <gasps> Eevee was my one of my faves. Oh, okay. Yeah. Eevee's adorable. The it was out fox. a while ago. A, a friend of ours, daughter who was done with it, said, oh, you guys can use this. She's never going to play this again. I was like, okay. <laughs> so okay. she loves Eevee. Um, and she loves Slither, the game that I was talking yep. about. Yep. And so she loves videos that have memes about them and jokes about them. She has a very well-developed sense of humor. Do you remember the old Nokia's? You said yeah. Slither, and all I can think of is Snake. Snake, yes. It was the only game on that phone. You just watched the game. line go over, over. How addicting that game was. Yeah, Slither Kids is very Kids these days will that. never know. They will never know how, like, limited we were in yes. our entertainment. Like, there was a game that I had when I was a kid called, um, well, remember Simon. Yes. And then there was one called um, Merlin. That was like a long maroon thing that had like an up, down, side, side thing. Uh huh. And there were a bunch of different games that were like mini versions of Snake. Okay. Kind okay. Of like yeah. Snake. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, so we've come a long so way. Long way. Yes, we so have. You mentioned therapy. Yes. Marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. What is the one tip that you've learned through either of your marriage counseling counselors? You have to put yourself first. So that you can take care of others. 
I tried telling my ex that one time when I was like trying to leave mm -hmm. and he threw it in my face like, oh, of course you are. Like, you're so self-entitled. And I was like, well, I would hope, I would hope that if it came down to you choosing me or your mental health that you would choose you. Yeah. He's like, no, I wouldn't. I was like, okay, then yeah. we, I guess we just see different uh, through different lenses, but yeah. And yeah. The, the metaphor that was used and you might've heard it too is that like, you know, when you're on an airplane and the oxygen drops, they tell you to put it on yourself put it on first, first. And then, you know, anybody who needs help with you that's traveling, whether they're elderly or a child or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, those are the people that you need to care for in your life. People who are elderly or children or, you know, people who might need some extra help. And you need to get that help so that you can help them. So, um, yeah, I've, I've learned to kind of put that, that people-pleasing side to me aside so that I can help the people that I don't, <laughs> that I'm trying not to please that, yeah. that and then that becomes, isn't that own, tough? Yeah. You feel that like internal guilt and you're like, Oh no, I'm pissing. But I would rather feel that than feel the regret of not being my authentic self and not being able to, to show up for the people that need me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and giving yourself just like I do that with texting people all the time I feel mm -hmm. so bad sometimes if people you know take my silence a certain way and it's just it's not that it's just like out of sight out of mind everything you know it's so hard to get yourself like my thoughts in in their own lanes on a daily basis like texting's the last thing I'm thinking about yeah but it's definitely I just lost my train of thought but um marriage counseling therapy damn i had a question taking care of yourself first taking care of myself first it'll come to me yeah <laughs> it'll come to me i really lost it that time you know what it was i just realized that i hadn't lit the candle and so i was thinking about the candle oh. and then we started to talk and i was like I oh love no invasive oh thoughts. no i hate it so much because i go oh no i feel it leaving i feel the thought leaving um well, while I think of that, do you think you can break the Guinness book? Are you good at drinking thing? I remember the thought. I remember the thought. Have you in your acting career been typecast? Have you been told by managers and agents that you fit in a specific bubble? Um, I, I, I think to a certain extent I have been typecast. You know, I go out for a lot of, I was talking this one time <clears throat> with a guy who was like, you kind of, your career arc is you grow from a nerd to a teacher, to a principal, to a superintendent. And, and some guys grow from a bully to a cop, to a judge. Oh, great. That's my trajectory. <laughs> <laughs> That's my trajectory. You could I'd be fact, a great I, cop. I know a cop that, that you remind me of. Great. Yeah. Great. She's judge, She's I'd love to play a judge. She's got like little stuffed animals, kind of like, uh, yeah. And so. a real cop? Yeah. Yeah. I think she's retired now. Yeah. My but. mom said I'd be too too heavy on the trigger, so I couldn't be a cop. I said, no, 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 I don't think so. You would be awesome as I a would judge love... later on in life. I'm too small, though. Doesn't matter. Judge Judy. She's got a Napoleon tall. complex. I just like strong arm everybody yes i'd have no shame be that judge. no one's off the table but so i guess in a certain sense i have and yet um uh most recently the roles that i've been have been a little bit against that type Ooh. like i played the milwaukee police commissioner in um uh, Dahmer. Dahmer. so that that was a different departure i was i played um a um like a like guy who was kind of like a sexual predator uh, in a movie called Mid Century, there's just one scene uh, near the very beginning where you know, and I've never been a character. I'm, the, I'm always the guy who's like you know, nerdy and shy, but in that, I was the exact opposite, creepy version of that. Or the, so I'm coming into, I, I think I'm coming into my own creepiness. I like that though. Yeah. Or were those dark sets? And by dark, I don't mean like <laughs> industry standard dark. I mean like, in, like for you, were those dark kind of mindsets or environments to be around uh, i think yeah yeah the dahmer one especially is what i'm talking about dahmer wasn't as much so because it's just me at an awards ceremony oh uh and i wasn't sh and I, I wasn't aware of how they were shooting it and what the intent was that they're going to intercut it with the woman who had you know noticed what he was doing and had been doing 
um, in like a small little community center with us in this big hotel ballroom, mm -hmm. you know, oh. dining, you know, big gala yeah, so you for didn't all the get police. To see. And I didn't know that most of my scenes were going to be shot from so far away. But they, they do that to like to show the size of this event, you know, the being uh, the officers being awarded for screwing up. Yeah. Um, so uh, I knew it was dark subject material, so that wasn't as dark. Oddly, the um, uh, mid-century was a little bit more so because I've never played a character like that. Yeah. I didn't want to creep out the actor that I was playing against. You know, and how she might feel. You know, if I'm how do you deal with that? Do you like have a talk with her beforehand, or because um, I haven't, I've never played. Since. Yeah, well, we met and and we were very, you know, cordial. And you know, the director explained what it needed to be, and then she kept on saying, "You could do more. Why don't you put your hand up on the wall?" And you know, I almost had to be coached by a female director into how to be intimidating. That's better. That's better woman. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want to get in yourself a situation where somebody's like, he made me feel extremely uncomfortable. Like, let them tell you to go further. I, You yeah. know, uh, on Ned's Fred Savage, one time I, I was supposed to like, I was, I did play the, the bully in the mm -hmm. school and I was supposed to grab somebody and like throw them up against a locker. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know my own strength. And I, like, I actually kind of choked this this poor human being, I think mm -hmm. it was an extra, and Fred, he chewed me out. He was like, we, have, rightfully so. He's yeah. like, you can't, but guess which take they used. So, like, yeah. I was like, I gave you what you wanted. All right, it worked. So, yeah. like, um, quick departure. Can you drink fast? Uh, I can drink water fast, yeah. Can you, do you think you could drink a Capri Sun very fast? Oh, wow. So we're talking suction. Mm-hmm. I, I, let's see how fast I can glue All right, I'm going to get a Capri Sun. The world, so the way, there was a world record that was broken for the fastest time a Capri Sun was, was drank. Okay. And it was 8.4 seconds. And so okay. I've had, so I'm not going to make you, because my last guest, I made uh, take a drink of a Four loco. I don't know if you've ever had a Four loco. And I'm not going to make you do that yeah, today because you have either. to go pick up your daughter. So yeah. I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to I'm going to do the Capri, Capri Sun challenge very, instead. Very apropos for okay, my daughter. Okay, right? I figured that. Yeah. Eh, sugar? You good with the sugar? Yeah. Okay. Let me go get the Capri Sun. Right. I'm going to hit the timer now. Don't you? You're not allowed to start drinking yet. Um, yeah. They. Uh, because when I first looked it up, they said that this the timing included taking off the oh, straw. However, had I known that. however, when I watched the film of the guy breaking the world record, he had mm -hmm. the straw out and almost in. So whatever, you, okay, it counts. All right, all right. You just let me know when you are ready. I'm ready. Steady. Go. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh, Done. 13 seconds. <sighs> I, I'll, I'll tell you what, though. You ha you almost had it. If you would have, like, in the last one, like, pushed it in. I was afraid of it would, like, spray all over me. We got to get good at the glizzies, Bill. We got to get good at the glizzies, Bill. Is, is anybody offering a glizzy workshop? <laughs> That's going to be my. That's going to be my Patreon. Glizzy oh, workshop. You can nice. come join and subscribe. I will. <laughs> well, Bill, I am so grateful that you came. And Thank had this chat me. with me. Thank yes. you for coming. I hope that theanine gummy helped. How do we find you? Uh, you can find me at Bill Cott on TikTok. I'm also at Bill Cott on uh, Threads and X. Um, I'm at Bill Cott anywhere. C-H-O-T-T. -T. Hell yeah. Thanks for coming. We out.